It's not the boy in the picture, this Robert Kolaski, that I come to see you about, Mr. Barnett. It's about Jimmy. And who would Jimmy be, Mrs. Callahan? My stepson. You see, Mr. Barnett, I have three other children of my own. Uh, just the facts, Mrs. Callahan. They are facts. They're all the facts I have, those children. That's why I'm here. You see, two of the boys are Jimmy's age. Quite, but getting close on to it. And he's beginning to have an influence on them, Mr. Barnett. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm scared. Jimmy's wild. I did the best I could with him, but maybe I got him too late. Well, what's all this to do with a boy named Robert Kalaski stealing a car and cracking it up? Jimmy was his friend. He used to speak all about him. And then, after the accident, he said something... What did Jimmy say? He said, never feel sorry for a talker, meaning this Robert Kalaski. And then he laughed. Sounded almost as if it wasn't an accident at all. Well, what do you expect me to do, Miss Callahan? I have to know if Jimmy's doing anything bad. I have to know before any of the other kids get mixed up in it. Why not go to the police? That would be a terrible thing to do to my own family. And supposing I was wrong. It'll be a terrible thing. You seem to be pretty sure. Well, yes, I suppose so. That's partly because Jimmy and his uncle, that's Manny Vesta, has a garage downtown. A thick as thieves together. And where Manny Vesta is, there's always trouble. Though it's me own ex-brother-in-law I'm speaking of. Well, I'll look into it for you, Mrs. Callahan. Yeah, I'd like to have a picture of Jimmy, if you have one, and a list of his favorite hangouts. I have a photo right here, Mr. Barnett. And his favorite hangout, I'm sorry to have to tell you, is a bar across from Manny's garage. I think Manny owns that, too. A nice thing at his age, a bar. <laughs> Something wrong? No, no, why? Well, you started out and come back. Yeah, fresh air always makes me thirsty. 
Besides, my car was just stolen, and I hate to walk. Yeah? Yeah. You want to call the police or something? No, I figured I'd get it back faster by calling Manny Vested. You know his number? Yeah. What are you, wise? Who wants Vesta? Mike Barnett. No, I don't know the number. You want Vesta? Walk right up the street. Yeah, I know. I just wondered if you knew the number. Well, when you tell him who's coming, tell him it's spelled with two T's. Money wants to see you in a hurry. Seen anybody in here, Carl? In here? Are you crazy? Only Jimmy. They want you inside. We expect in company. And if we don't show, we might have to go to shop in a hurry. What's wrong? That the new one? Yeah, he just brought it in. Well, that's what's wrong. The dopey little punk picked it up from a private eye. It smelled like a plant. Should be in a garden. In good shape? Yeah, too good. I'll bet it's rent just for us. Hey, come in. Peter, he's searching the place inside and out. Did you get in here, Mr. Barnett? Where'd you come from? That's what I asked you, friend. Only I asked first. I drove in with Jimmy. That Jimmy. This sand is day, I guess. Well, come on. Manny wants to see you. That's funny, because I want to see Manny, too. Only I'd rather go of my own free will. Dead or alive, he wants to see you. Your choice. <laughs> That's free will, isn't it? Come on. Well, I never argue with... Logic of that caliber. Thanks, Pete. You let him call you that? That's my name. Your parents had six sight. Listen, you... Janet. Hiya, Mr. Barnett. Yeah, sit down, won't you? 
Just as soon as Stan, thanks. Peggy. Now, Mr. Barnett, what brought you a flat footin' after me? An anonymous letter. What else? But don't waste my time. I'm not stupid. No? Then that's where you differ from your nephew. Oh. You know he's my nephew. How? There's a strong family resemblance. Something about the way you both hustle cars. Look a pig, Mr. Barnett. He's just itching to use the butt of that gun. I must have had you figured wrong, Manny. I thought you only let youngsters do your dirty work for you. If I were you, pig. Oh. Easy. How many times have I got to tell you concussions I want, not fractures? I guess I should apologize for pig, Mr. Barnett. He puts too much muscle in it. But he's eager. He wants to please. Next time, he won't bear down so hard. Better not. It won't be a third time. What'll he do for fun, then? Hungry, isn't he? Yeah, I'm teaching him how to muscle. All he needs is control. Yeah, it's about time for another lesson, unless you, uh, unless you want to open up. I'm already opened up. Sorry, Jimmy. Jimmy tipped the play by talking too much. I didn't. It's a lie. I didn't talk, Manny. I never said a word. This is the con, Barnett. No, I don't pick on kids, me. He's lying, it is. I never talk, see? A kid named Robert Kalaski and his girlfriend cracked up in a stolen car. It looked like an accident. According to my information, Kalaski and Jimmy here were good friends. But Jimmy didn't even bother to go to his funeral. Matter of fact, he just laughed about the whole thing. Said, never feel sorry for a talker. What do you suppose he meant by that? But I told that to Ma. Oh, you did? Manny! I should have known. That's the chance you take with cheap help, Manny. You pay off and talk, you get paid back the same way. So Rose Callahan went to you. There's a reason. She always hated me because she's a ain't got and I'm a have got. Never stop to think she might hate you for the way you got it? Yeah, why'd she go to you? Why is Snooper? Where'd she get the dough? We never discussed fee. And why not the cops unless she... Okay, Mouthy, what else did you say? Come on, spill it. Nothing, nothing, Manny, I swear it. She, she saw the picture in the paper and started getting sloppy, see? Because cause she knew he was a buddy of mine. Jimmy, call your old lady. What? I said, call your old lady. You're going to tell her three things. One, you won't be home tonight. Two, you're bunking with some friend. Three, you ain't seen me lately. In fact, you, in fact, you think I'm out of town. Now go on, get on it. Don't do it, Jimmy. You'll be giving him a license to kill you. You're out of this, Barnett. Go on, get on it, Jimmy. Jimmy, don't. Grow up. All he wants is an alibi. That phone call would do it fine. You don't even hear him, Jimmy. Look, kid, I, I got my good reasons for asking you to do this. <laughs> you talked out of time so far. Just still in the fine scene. And we got a good job to do tonight. Now go on, get on it. Oh, I'm on. This is, this is Jimmy. I am. Um, I won't be home tonight. No, I'm. Uh, I'm bunking with a guy. Well, just a guy. You don't know him, see? No, no, it's, it's not Manny. Manny's... Manny, I, I ain't seen him around for a couple of days. He's, he's out of town. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow. So don't worry, huh? Well, that did it. First round for Manny Vesta. Jimmy, who do you trust? Him or me? I, I, I gotta trust you, Manny. Hey, Manny, I got a 48 Chevy. Not now. I, I said later. Another teenager? How many do you hire, Manny? Too many to let anyone plumber up the deal. Like Kalaski and Jimmy here? Who rigged up the Kalaski accident? Don't tell me. Let me guess. Let me guess why he did it. He did it to teach the gang a lesson about bragging around. Is that right? Then Jimmy became eligible. Just one simple little sentence. Never feel sorry for a talker. Still feel the same way, Jimmy? 
call him off, will you? Big. You'd be real happy in a slaughterhouse. You're wasting your time worrying about Jimmy, Mr. Barnett. Nothing's gonna happen to him. It's already happened to him. And all the other kids you've suckered into this racket. They got born on the wrong side of the tracks, and you tell them you'll move them over to the right side. They just get as far as the third rail. Maybe I know what's best for him. After all, I was born in the gutter myself. And since you never got out, you don't want them to either. So you teach them to kill and steal to make sure, is that right? Ah, uh, you sound like a Salvation Army. Well, you can stop beating your base drum because you got a trip to make. Yeah, and if you start any trouble, a little man, Ed's gonna split your head open, them's orders. All right, take him outside, throw him in the back of the car. I'll be there in a minute. Tell Carl and the boys what goes. <laughs> an eye on him. I have to go talk to the car. Jimmy. Look at me in the mirror if you don't want to turn around. Where are we going? Country, I guess. He knows places. To arrange accidents? For me and you? Me first in my own car. Then maybe on the way back that trigger finger of pigs will get itchy. You're not as popular around here as you used to be, you know. Cut it out. Why do you think he had you call your mother? I said cut it out. Get my hands free, Jimmy. You can do it. If I can get my hands free, I can take care of that gun of pigs. I'll be sitting next to him. I can't. Why not? I'm scared. Which would you rather be, scared or dead? With you, I could end up both. Remember what Manny does to talkers, Jimmy. You talked. Don't let me louse up your conference. I was just trying to get a little information. That's too bad. What type of information you want? About those Texas license plates. I don't get it. <laughs> it's a cinch. Heist the car in New York and the tags in Texas. And maybe a quick, dry paint job. That cools it off long enough to pedal it. An out-of-state dealer sells it, and that's that. He takes the rap, not me. What about the registration? <laughs> People are stoops. They leave them mostly in the glove compartment. They don't, we print them up ourselves. Okay, Jimmy, let's go. I'll tell you where. Pig, get in the back.
throw the gun away. so rough. The kid there's your guy. He was at the wheel. So he's up for reckless driving. You can explain a stolen car? And what about a little case of kidnapping, too, officer? Stolen? There was no beef out on that crate. No? No, unless you... Hey, how did you... That's right, Manny. I set it up. I knew there wouldn't be a chance for me to get to a phone once I left the bar, so I stepped into the phone booth and reported the car stolen before it happened. Before? That's right, while Jimmy was lifting my keys. All right, come on. Now it's your turn to take a little ride, Manny. Have a seat. That one's soft and comfortable. The state's holding a hard seat for later, the wooden one with the copper upholstery. Stop at all traffic lights, officer. Your passenger looks a little nervous. 